I kind of thought, okay, well, I want this, maybe this composition that kind of starts up here and kind of goes diagonal a little bit. That's kind of what I was thinking. And it's what I've done in the previous one. And it's what I'll do for this one too, just because I, I like it and it works. Um, cause I'm always trying to think about composition, you know, like what do I want to do throughout the painting to kind of maintain this, you know, the flow or the direction of the, of the painting. Okay. So now we've got our original photo and we've got the portion that we want for the painting. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add the, uh, paper and the, the paint textures, which is right here in this layer from the ultimate canvas creator. So this file is from the ultimate canvas creator, which includes these textures and paper or paint textures and paper textures. So I'm just going to turn that on and you can see if I zoom in, like it adds that little bit of watercolor paper. And it also added a bit of contrast as well, because there's some paint textures in there that are just, it's just affecting a little bit of, of what is underneath all the layers that are underneath. And it's amazing, Nathan, how that just almost instantly looks like a painting as well. Yeah, it kind of just, just gives doing it, that right? step. Like if I move it around, you can kind of see the textures that are happening underneath, you know, because they're staying in place and then we're just moving that around. So you can kind of see what's happening there. All right, so now I am going to, okay, so what we need to do, now that we have our paper, uh, paper texture in place, we need to, like what I was talking about, we need to bring out some of those, like uh, those colors and, and things that are in the photo that we can use later on in the painting. So in order to do that, I'm going to do a uh, curves adjustment first. And what I like to do for a curves adjustment almost always is I add a bunch of dots onto this line and then I'm going to move them around and just kind of, you see those colors that are starting to come out like in the ear and like right above the eye, we're getting like this really nice pink orange color. It's also bringing out some colors in the eyes. So I just kind of move these around and adjust them until I see something that I like. So kind of establishing like your base palette, I guess, at this stage. Yeah, kind of just a, a good base, good base mm. palette. Okay, I kind of like that. And then I'm gonna punch it up a little bit more with a hue and saturation. I'm just gonna take the saturation and just bump it up. So now we've kind of got this, uh, uh, these like Sienna colors and kind of a cadmium red or orange that's in there. That just wasn't there before it was in the original photo we just couldn't really see it right until we make those adjustments all right let me make sure i'm on i'm on course here okay yeah i also want to let's duplicate this one because we're going to use that for reference later but i'm going to turn that duplicate off okay so what we want to do now is i'm going to start to take all of the noise out and when i say noise i'm talking about this kind of stuff right here that's in a photo but not necessarily in a painting because when you're when you're painting, you're thinking about all of these fur, these clumps of colored fur as shapes and not like just like actual individual strands of, of fur and hair and things. So sure. we're gonna get rid of some of that by taking the smudge tool. And I found that really any of these three brushes, well, again, you could probably use any brush with a smudge tool and it would probably work just fine, but I wanted something kind of with a hard edge, with a sharp edge. So the wet edge detail, the sharp sable, and mostly water brush, these three brushes seem to work really well for this. Um, so what I want to do is I want to go in here and I'm just going to start. Well, I want to be on the right layer. I'm going to start to just kind of blur and smudge away some of this noise. And instantly, right, just instantly, it starts to look like a painting. Remember when I said easy? <laughs> <laughs> Too easy. So, so, and what I'm doing here, like the trick to this though, is I'm my brush strokes are going in the direction of the fur. Like I don't want to start going like opposite of the fur. Like I don't want to go in a, in a, if the fur is going vertical, I don't want to go horizontal. I'm just trying to, trying to make paint strokes in the direction of the fur. Taking out detail, making it more abstract, I guess. Yes, making it more abstract. But the thing about this is, though, here's the here's the trick. Like, you don't want to remove all of the hard edges because hard edges 
can be really, really important. You've got to have the mixture of hard and soft edges. And I talk about that a lot in the watercolor uh, course, the master watercolor course. There's a lot, there's a whole discussion, a whole video on edges and why you've got to have those, that variety of edges. So this is probably the longest part of the process and I'm going pretty fast here. Like don't, when you're doing this, like don't rush it. Don't, don't go this fast. You know, I'm just going this fast for demo purposes, but don't, don't worry about, uh, don't worry about going this fast and leave some of the, like leaves a little bit. Remember to leave the hard edges, you know, don't, don't get rid of everything because what will happen is if, if you, if you blur everything, it's just going to look like a blurry, painting like it's just there, there'll be nothing to, for your eye to focus on and you, you don't want that see how that's kind of looking like like it already kind of looks like watercolor you know like it just has the look of you know like we were dabbing like wet into wet paint the paper's already wet and we're adding a pretty soaked brush with wet paint into it and it kind of creates this you know where all this all these colors run together a little bit okay so a good a good example is, is along the nose here i know you can't you can't see my my pen but along the nose here right next to the eye there, there's there's detail there that we don't want to lose because that's a very important line and it gives the cat's face dimension and depth so we don't we don't want to lose that line so i'm gonna zoom out a little bit yeah, so see, that's already looking really cool. See what I mean? I, I was so excited when I started doing this because like, oh man, you know, people were asking for this and I think I can do it. Um, you know, I think I can demo this, but I don't know. We'll see how it turns out. And as soon as I started doing this, I was just like, oh yes, it's the zone. It's the zone. <laughs> I found it. Like, this is so easy. I can't remember what that Disney film is. Is it Soul? Have you seen Soul, the Disney Pixar film? I, yeah, I about so. being in the zone and stuff. It's really cool. Really good. Yeah, news. yeah, good film. Okay, so let me get some 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 of this detail out of the ear here. Yeah, it's looking really nice already, isn't it? It really is vibrant. Yeah, yeah. I love the ears. The color's amazing. We, we haven't even done anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, he uh, he did this instructional video a while back, and he he was he was going in and he was doing all this stuff, and then he kind of stepped back and he said, "No, we haven't even done anything yet." And I was thinking, "Oh my gosh, that looks that looks fantastic! <laughs> it looks beautiful." And he's thinking he hadn't even done anything yet. So I wanna I wanna I wanna leave the uh, the whiskers. I don't want to blur those out just because um, it, it, it'll be hard to draw them back in. And, and look real natural. So I'm just going to leave them. I'm just going to leave them there. All right. So I'm going to size this brush up a little bit and then I'm just going to take some of these edges. That's too much. Hey, Amy says, so he's blowing with a watercolor brush? I'm doing what? <laughs> blowing with a watercolor brush? <laughs> I don't know what that means. That you're, you're using a watercolor brush to blur. Oh, blur, blur. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, of, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm with you now. I got confused. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm pulling some of the edges out here. Just I've made the brush size larger. And I'm just going to pull out some of these really soft edges. Now, okay, to get like if you look underneath the face here to get that like that sort of a wash, you know, that would be like wet paper and we're adding a load a loaded paintbrush to and, and that paint would just like fan out like that. And that's something that is like a signature watercolor thing, you know, like you do that and it just instantly makes things look like real watercolor. It does look super real, but you, you spend a lot of time, don't you, Nathan? I think achieving that real watercolor look digitally. Yeah, ab absolutely. You know, as a, uh, yeah. As a traditional wow. artist as well. Yeah, because I'm always looking for, you know, how do I, 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 you know, you do something cool with traditional paint. You think, well, how can I get that into a digital, you know, because I could really, I could really play with that and, and do something with it on the digital side. And so you're always trying to figure out, and that's the fun part to me is like always trying to figure out, well, how can I, how can I reproduce this in a digital environment? You know, get the same kind of look and texture because I love the texture and look of traditional traditional art traditional paint you know oil painting 
acrylic, watercolor, whatever it is, pencil drawing. I mean, it doesn't matter. I just, I love the look and I'm always, the, the, the real softness of, and, and perfection of digital is, is I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan of as much sure. as, as, as the traditional stuff. So I'm always looking like, how do you reproduce the look and feel of traditional media on the digital side? Okay. Let me make sure I'm on track here. Okay. So now we're going to paint in a few washes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer underneath that layer. And I want to sample, I want to sample some colors that I want to create um, some washes with, some washes that are like, that will kind of fill in some of our background, right? So I'm going to start with maybe this orange color. And I'm going to go, let's go back to those mix, oh, those mixer brushes, because I'm, I'm really liking those right now. Are you using the dry or the paint canvas creator? I presume you're using like the wet media. Yeah, this will be the wet. This will yeah. be the wet media one. It's got all these watercolor um, papers and textures um, in the wet media set. That's perfect. Perfect for this. If you're if you're trying to re reproduce the look of watercolor. But I, I mean, I guess you could experiment between all of them with different. Mediums. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. For sure. Yeah, if you wanted to to create like a, a charcoal drawing, I mean, you could take the same photo and just start off with it with black and white, right? And then just start start from there. To produce like a charcoal look okay so i got uh i got this light mixer brush and i've got this sort of orange color selected and i'm going to go in with really light pressure and just start to add a wash to the background Mm, that's beautiful, Nathan. I love the way it plays with the colors off the ears, you know? Isn't it crazy? It really so brings fun. us to life. Yeah, I'm going to grab oh, this yellow color. Yeah, beautiful. And just kind of do the same, same thing. And I'm just sampling colors from inside the, the, the photo, right? I mean, I'm not like, I'm not adding new, I'm not having, there's no color theory, you know? I'm not having to do that. I'm not having to... to to choose and guess colors here. I'm just taking colors from within the photo that are already there. And it's easy. <laughs> so easy. Okay. Get this orange again here. Nice. I'm just and pulling up the Instagram one to look at it that one at the same time. It's intriguing. Yeah, it's probably going to look a little bit different. Yeah, it does. It's really interesting. This one's a bit more dreamy currently. Right, right. Yeah, and you could, you could, you know, you can probably stop somewhere around here, but I'm not good at stopping. Like I like to keep, you know, I like to keep going. You can always, you can always remove stuff later. If you don't like the way it looks. All right. I feel like I, I feel like I, I want like a darker. Let me see if I can just add a little bit of a darker wash down here. Oh, there, there we go. That, that's what I wanted to do. Oops, a spatter and a splatter different, do you think? What's the difference between a spatter and a splatter? Is there a... <laughs> I, I prefer splatters. Splatters to splatters, <laughs> I okay. Know. I don't know if there's a difference. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to add another layer on top of that. And I want to add... Um, this time I'm going to stamp. I, I just painted those washes. But I always like to use um, some wash stamps that are included with the set. And those are found in the washes set right here. And I'm just going to try to, these just add a lot of realistic texture. Um, and you can, of course, put these down. You can change the direction. You know, you can blur some of the edges and do things with them. But a lot of times I will just go in and just add these in and just kind of experiment and just kind of see what happens. Like just right off the bat, like that's pretty cool. That's really cool. Oh, that's um, nice. You almost you almost can't go wrong, right? I mean, it's just like, oh, that's that's kind of nice. <laughs> you know, so it's just you know, it's it's just a matter of just, of just kind of playing with it, and it gives it this really nice, um, you know, real nice texture that I like a lot. It gives it a real realistic look. Um, I, I don't think to... this could be any further removed from those like watercolor products where you stick it into Photoshop and you know hit an. Action. Oh right. Yeah, yeah, you don't. Yeah, so that's probably a little too strong. Yeah, I just I, I don't know those those just feel sort of artificial to me. And I don't, 
And it's also not fun. Like, who wants to just push a button, right? I mean, kind of. Just, Cass it's more fun to do something like this. Cassie, Cassie asks if you can show the layers when you're done, just for a moment. For sure. Yeah. Uh, right here. And and okay. Marguerite says that your course was a real eye opener, which is lovely to hear, right? It's oh, that's so cool. Nice. That's fantastic. Yeah, I, that, really that's always good. great to hear. I get you know I get a lot of messages on Instagram and things that people say that kind of thing, and that's so encouraging because you know I know for me like you know, in your own art journey, you have these, you know, these moments of like, oh, this, this works. I love this, this, whatever this is now. I'm in love with this texture, this technique or this brush or whatever it is. So if I can facilitate one of those moments for anyone, I mean, that's, that's fantastic. I love that. I mean, I think that's really, really um, Do you incredible. know what, that's, that's like it before we did, before Design Cut started looking at courses and, and working into courses with designers. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Yeah, you know, because absolutely. it's just so fantastic, yeah. right? When you help out another yeah. designer or another artist, oh, yeah. and you give it just gives so much yeah. value. It's yeah, changing. It's awesome. because, yeah, yeah, I mean, when when you take on a new a new something that you feel good about, you know, like a yeah. technique or or something that's For like, sure. hey, I'm, I'm 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 I feel good about the way I'm painting right now. I mean, that that's just that's an amazing feeling. Okay. Oh, we wanted to look at the layers. Okay, so I have the original photo here, which we're going to use for reference here in just a sec. Um, this is the this is the layer right here that I blurred a little bit. So that's where the majority of the painting is. That's the original photo that we 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 used that water brush to sort of take out all the noise and detail. Um, I've got a layer here that contains my um, uh, one of my wash stamps, which I'm just going to merge those two down because they're the same thing. This one contains uh, those wash stamps as well. This one contains the washes that I painted with a brush. And then, of course, this last one is our original photo. All right. OK, so now where are we at now? OK, this is something that I've been doing for a little while that I just like. And it's just a thing like you don't have to do this, but it's just something that I like to do. Um, but I will take a, the smudge tool and I'll go down to like uh, maybe the salt or alcohol effects. Um, let's try sprinkled salt. It doesn't really matter. Just any any one of these will probably work. But I size it up pretty big, and again, I'm using the smudge tool, and I want to be on the um, the the main painting layer. And if you just kind of lightly just come in, and just very lightly, to, if, I don't even know if you saw what happened there, but it just adds this, like, see that little bit of kind of splatter, and it just it threw in just this light bit of texture. I'm gonna do it again out here. I don't know if you if you see it's so subtle, but like down here. You know, it just, I'm just dragging these little bits of texture like out of the cat's face. It's breaking it up though. And I know you're a big fan of like leading the eye in the composition as well. And they mm -hmm. really do help lead the eye into the center of the composition, don't they? They kind of act as a blocker right. to stop yeah. your eye from just drifting yeah. off. Yeah. And it, it, give, it gives this really kind of realistic, um, just because watercolor is not like there's never it's not like oil paint you know there's not like this solid block of like brush stroke uh you know opaque color ever really so when you do something like this it just kind of it adds a little bit of that element that's just kind of what watercolor does and a lot of times i'm doing this and i'm i'm dipping the brush and i'm going back and forth and this kind of stuff just happens like because i'm slinging i'm slinging water and but in a digital environment it it doesn't happen unless you create it, right? So that's what we have to do sometimes. 